This is Swing, 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 a celebration of swing music. I'm Kenetra Miller, coordinator of vocal jazz studies at Howard University, and in this segment, we talk about the music that started it all. It was the music that defined a generation. Once upon a time, the dance music in America was swing music. flying through the air and being swung between their legs and all over the place. It was incredibly exciting music, and exciting because it was dance music. Most of the people who first danced to this music are gone now. But some of you out there may be lucky enough to still be able to ask your great-grandmother what she danced to. And if you can, she'll tell you. It was the music you're hearing right now, swing jazz. Eric Felton is one of the people keeping swing jazz alive today. He directs the Eric Felton Jazz Orchestra. The term describes not only the rhythm of the music, but the way you'd move to the music. You can step to it. Doom, 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 doom. So the bass drummer is going to be playing on the bass drum. Doom, 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 doom. And you've got the bass going. Doom, 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 doom. You've got a guitarist, an acoustic guitarist going. Chomp, 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 chomp. And you have the piano player going. Boom, chink, boom, chink, boom, chink, boom, chink. Add all of that together, and you've got this big. Doom, 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 doom. And then in between, there's kind of a lilting feel in between those thumping quarter notes. And the lilting feel is... And it all comes together and creates this danceable beat. When the swing era started around 1935, jazz has already been going strong in the United States for more than 50 years. But when swing happened, it was revolutionary. This is what the earliest jazz sounded like. We play Dixieland. That's Earl Sakis. Earl plays trombone with the Firecracker Jazz Band. Dixieland is the beginning of jazz, and the early jazz was very basic. Dixieland music sounds more structured than swing, a bit less free. According to swing jazz band director Eric Felton, that's because of where Dixieland came from. See, a lot of the popular music in the era before Dixieland was marching music. We all know what marches sound like. Da, 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 da. It's very straight. Uh, everything's very even and precise. When jazz came along, it did loosen things up. So instead of da, 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 you might ba, boo, ba, da, da, ba, 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 do, da, do, da, ba. But we weren't that far removed from marching, so Dixieland still had that regimented beat. After World War I, jazz loosened up even more. It was moving away from the marching, regimented Dixieland sound and closer and closer to what would become swing. You're hearing the next stage of jazz right now. This is a band called Tiny Parm and his musicians, who played something called hot jazz. Brian Carpenter is with a band called the Ghost Train Orchestra. They play this kind of music. It's very atmospheric and evocative and cinematic kind of music. It was also very different and darker and stranger than a lot of 
the other kind of music that was going on around that time, 1927 to 1932, just five years where this music existed, and then gone, done. Nothing like it since or before. Bands in the late 20s mostly played in tiny clubs. Alcohol was illegal then, and so bars were tiny and hidden away. But Prohibition ended in 1933, and suddenly everyone could party out in the open. Dance halls got bigger, dances got bigger, and so the bands had to get bigger too. Along with that, there was a change in the way people defined what was considered modern, not just in music, but in buildings, cars, airplanes, everything. As Eric Felton explains, everything had a new look and a new sound. If you look at a 1920s automobile, it's pretty square. Look at a 1930s automobile. The fenders have these swooping curves and everything flows together. And so in art, in architecture, you had this movement to take things that were squared off and to make them smooth and streamlined. And similarly in the music, you go from this sort of ta da 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 ha da da right? And it gets looser and it gets smooth and streamlined. There are some examples of what he's talking about that will actually let you hear the transition from hot jazz to swing. Brian Carpenter talks about the song Boy in the Boat. If you listen to that 1928 piece, you hear the main read melody line is dee da 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 dee da dee da da do dee do dee da Now, when you get it ten years later, that would be played dee and da and dee da, dee and da and dee and dee da. You hear the difference? The real big transition is from hot jazz into swing, which creates this groove that is the foundation for all the jazz we know today, and really the foundation of rock and roll and all the pop music we know today. The beat was a distinctive element that made swing swing. But that wasn't all that was special about it. Another element that told you a song swung was something called a riff. Eric Felton explains. A riff is basically a repeated phrase. And a repeated phrase was a way for a whole section, so maybe you'd have all the saxophones together, to play something that bounced the, the music along, gave it that sort of danceable bounce. The rhythm section might be going jump, 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 jump. The saxes will be going And it's this repeated phrase and it gives it that really danceable rhythm. Everything's arranged. The trumpets are playing in harmony one thing. The trombones are playing in harmony, maybe a different riff, but they're all organized. But within that context, there are also solo breaks. And so the band will be cooking along, playing, and then the ensemble will back off and somebody will step forward to take a solo. And so you still had the freedom of jazz improvisation. As I said at the beginning, most of the people who danced to this music originally are dead, but the music is still very much alive. The great thing about the best in jazz is that it is classic in the way that classical music is, which is we don't say, you know, we're not going to do Mozart anymore because Mozart, that's kind of passe. But the great thing about jazz is that, unlike classical music, you don't have to treat it like it's something in a museum. You can change it and shape it and add your own ideas to it. According to Brian Carpenter, that's how you keep the music not only alive, but young. The way we play this music, we don't play it anything like it was played before that. We're taking all sorts of freedoms. It's a very modern interpretation of it.
You might be wondering how someone ends up playing music that his grandparents danced to. Well, in Eric's case, it actually started with his grandfather, who was a swing-era trombone player. In fact, we kept playing trombone duets together until he was 96 years old. With Brian Carpenter, it started in high school. He'd been playing trumpet in the orchestra in junior high, but in high school he had a music teacher who said, Why don't you try out for the jazz band? I said, oh, sure. So I did that, and what I found was that as steeped as I was in, in these trumpet concertos and everything, playing trumpet in the jazz big band was so much more fun. <laughs> His band teacher was a huge jazz fan, and when he saw Brian like the music, he used to play it for him in his office after class. And I said, Mr. Nelson, I'm going to be late to English. He said, no, 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 don't worry about English, don't worry about it, you know, and so he'd have me in there, I'd be in there listening to this thing for 5, 10, 15 minutes, and I would always be late to the next class because he would kind of hold me over. And he stayed with it, because even though this music is from 75 years ago, Brian and Eric don't find it old. As Brian says, It gives you insight into the music today. Even if you're only interested in fully appreciating the music of the moment, understanding where that music comes from really helps you appreciate and uh, involve yourself in that music all the more. I have a rock band too, I have these other bands where I, where I take information from this and I, you know, I use it in these other bands. You, know, that, uh, you think, you know, as you're transcribing it, think, oh, that's an interesting idea. Maybe that would come in handy over here. It's just a huge learning process, and it's fun. You know, you're putting the puzzle. With jazz, you're constantly putting the puzzle together. You know, you have all these puzzle pieces. Thanks for listening. I'm Kenetra Miller of Howard University for Arts Edge, a program of the Education Department of the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts. We are the Eric Felton Jazz Orchestra.